There we go. We see things and I will go ahead and mute myself. Thanks again, Alex. Kick it off. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, like Brad said, uh, excited to be here today, talk a little bit about Mortgage Research Center, as well as just the overall mortgage industry as a whole, as we, you know, wrapped up a pretty crazy 2020 and then kind of what we're seeing to kick start off the year this year. Certainly, I think today the 10 years up and rates are up and it's been a little bit up and down to start things off. Um, so a little bit about Mortgage Research Center. Uh, we work with about 200 plus lenders uh, selling leads primarily, and we work with about 50 different publishers who we help generate those leads on uh, their websites. We'll get into that a little bit later uh, and everything we see across our network and, and sites. But wanted to kick things off with kind of the you know, industry as a whole, kind of what we saw in 2020. Quick recap for everybody. Uh, this data just came out, I think, end of March, uh, the 2020 Humda. Uh, we have a great partner in Polygon Research who compiles all the Humda data. Uh, some pretty crazy stats for the year, though, as everyone's aware. Massive refi year, over 189% growth in refi units. Cash out up 43%. I think we'll get into a little bit on cash outs later. Purchase as well, still just gradually growing up 8% for the year. Um, overall, though, applications way up 50% uh, almost overall. Uh, we did see less home improvement, and I think you'll see that product come back. And then I'm sure CoreLogic will get into home values and what we see there, 13% year over year growth. Uh, I think we're already seeing 12, 13% uh, from their index. Uh, this year so far in February, I saw some numbers, 17%, 19% out of March and Q1. So home values, property values rising fast, uh, continuing uh, this 2020 trend. Uh, but overall, Q4 was absolutely massive in terms of overall originations. I think Inside Mortgage Finance just came out with their uh, Q1 numbers, and, and they're actually showing a 3% uptick even over these Q4 numbers. So we're, we're still kind of at historic levels of origination right now with all the refi going on. Uh, the Federal Reserve puts these numbers out during their, uh, I think quarterly, it should come out soon. I was hoping it'd be out this month. Um, a little sooner, but I bet they'll release kind of what the Q1 numbers look like. Likely a slight increase there, but really an absolutely massive quarter. And, and so far that has been on the higher credit side. So into this year, we hopefully will see some loosening of credit. Uh, we'll see what happens there for a, a lot of borrowers. And that's what we're hearing from a lot of our lenders. They're starting to loosen up their credit buckets. We maybe will start seeing some more growth out of this 660 to 720 maybe even some growth out of the 620 to 660 range, but credit is still fairly tight out there. So there, there's still certainly room in some of those different credit buckets. There's also certainly room um, when it comes to different products. We're, we're just starting to see FHA refis hit highs in March. Um, we're just starting to see some of those products that were maybe a little bit more delinquent. Last year, lenders are opening up, opening up credit and starting to hit some of those new products. Oh, I was gonna go on the next slide. The other thing that you're probably hearing a lot of is the margin compression. Uh, we had a couple of different lenders report earnings last week. They definitely touched on the fact that gain on sale margins are heading down, uh, but really we're returning kind of to a normal spread between the 10 year and uh, the 30 year. So mortgage. So today rates, I think were ticking up towards 1.7 on the 10 year. Uh, you can see we were at a crazy historic spread there. Um, however, that drop that occurred uh, back in March, April last year, we really didn't see that drastic drop in mortgage rates. Um, and we're really not seeing a drastic rise like as we've seen out of the 10-year this year. So you're starting to hear that. If anything, the spread is starting to look a little below averages. So it'll be interesting to see if that normalizes, but definitely uh, something to keep an eye on as the 10-year rises, what exactly does that spread do and how are lenders going to manage that. Home values are also a big factor. Uh, that get left out of that conversation. Home values have definitely been going up quite a bit since even 2018. So while spreads are, you know, and gain on sale margins are compressing, you are certainly doing loans at higher loan values as well. Uh, the other piece that certainly everyone's been hearing a lot about is foreclosures. Uh, we still haven't obviously seen a ton of foreclosures yet. Uh, we'll see what happens when we get to some different deadlines. Delinquencies are still certainly high, uh, especially at that 90 day plus level, the 30 to 60 day delinquencies have been dropping pretty steadily, uh, but we're still seeing necessarily no real foreclosures on the market due to the restrictions um, and, and a lot of delinquencies out there. So maybe some of this inventory becomes inventory on the market. I, I don't know if you'll actually see some people are forecasting a spike in foreclosures. 
you know, a lot of these people are in the money on their homes. And so as we get closer to some of these deadlines, maybe you'll see some of these homes come on the market and a little bit of a softening uh, in terms of inventory. Uh, this just touches on the delinquencies. Uh, also following unemployment, uh, we'll continue keeping an eye. I think this is from last week on those unemployment numbers, but those two typically pretty correlated in terms of where we sit. Uh, one big piece will, is purchase applications. Uh, right now we are pacing again, uh, likely another even bigger purchase year. Purchase applications have just been steadily rising. Uh, and last year was just 8% growth. Purchase tends to not grow at as rapid a pace as refi. You're gonna see 20% swings in the refi market. Plus you're only really usually gonna see 10% swings in purchase. So it'll be interesting to see this year, can we get above 10% growth out of the purchase market for 2021? Uh, it's trending to be a, a very big year. We'll see how much new construction we can see uh, impacting that as well. Refi, more all over the map, but still while trending down a little bit uh, recent weeks, uh, you're still seeing a pretty strong refi market, certainly above where we were in 2018. Uh, as rates tick higher, we'll, we'll see where that sits, but uh, as we're starting to see on the search side, more people looking for cash outs, some of those other products, where are, are a lot of those refis gonna go? Uh, you know, there's certainly some places that are still left in the market where you know customers have more equity. There's more tools that haven't necessarily been uh, utilized over the last year. One of them, like I touched on was FHA. This is actually March's FHA data. It just came out uh, and, and you're seeing it, right? FHA delinquencies are the highest of any product. Lenders really didn't focus on FHA last year for that reason. You saw you know, credit restrictions there. Right now, you're seeing FHA really take off uh, as more lenders are taking a look at the product. The purchase side is also taking off, though steadier. Uh, so maybe we'll see spikes, you know, obviously out of those first time home buyers, we'll see FHA purchase growth, but also you're starting to see those FHA cash out growth and overall FHA you know, loans are starting to hit some pretty high numbers. And this, again, just touches on that purchase refi mix. This is some great data out of Stratmore. Uh, they've got a great peer group next week if you're uh, in the consumer direct space, uh, but their data, always great from MBA that they've aggregated. And this just gives you a look over time. So over time, like I was been touching on, that purchase growth is steady. You know, MBA is forecasting steady purchase growth to come. Obviously, a lot of demographic tailwinds are going to bring that. Um, and still pretty strong refi in 2021. But... I don't know, will we get to a 25% refi market? Will we be at a 33? You know, consistently in the past, we've been at 50% uh, refi. I'm not sure if that is as sustainable uh, at these levels. So we're certainly at kind of all time mortgage levels coming from 2020, where it goes. I'm sure a lot of the people watching have their predictions and we'll have to see. The other piece, a big trend we've been seeing is the shift uh, in independence taking on more of the purchase market. So. You know, the last several years, uh, again, this is from Polygon, uh, we've seen really steady growth out of independence from purchase. Credit unions are also seen growing. Banks not doing as much overall purchase units. Certainly a lot of volume still uh, definitely dominant in the jumbo space, uh, driving a lot of the overall volume. But from a units standpoint, you know, the independents are still doing and continuing to doing a lot more purchases as that purchase market grows. So be interested to see as banks loosen, will they do more purchases this year or not? Uh, some are, some aren't from early numbers. So still some movement there. And then overall, I mean, we've really seen a 60-40 switch in the overall marketplace um, of non-banks doing that, you know, 60% of the market probably back in 2013. In the last year, we probably got to about 60% nearly is being done by non-banks, um, independents, affiliates doing more and more of the overall especially with all that need for refi. Independents are taking a greater share of that. And we'll see with HELOCs, home equity was actually down last year. Uh, will we see more home equity lending? That tends to be more from the banks, more cash out lending coming back online. Uh, so where does that sit? So did it, uh, that kind of wraps up uh, some of what we we're going at for kind of a market update uh, to kick things off. We'd certainly also like to talk a little bit about kind of MRC's approach and kind of what we've been seeing out in the market from shoppers and borrowers themselves and where we see you know different growth in the different subsects online that's really our focus so we really focus on a few different types of shoppers home search is definitely a big one um you know 
continuing to see more and more traffic. I think there's some good headlines the last uh, week about traffic constantly going up from home search. Uh, I know I was just going through the process. I was on all the home search sites constantly. Uh, also seeing a lot more of people looking to talk to agents. Are they going to list? Are they going to buy? Is now the right time to list? A lot of interest in that. And then really, are you, how are you going to figure out your financing? I, I group all the refi into that chunk, but certainly on the purchase side, what product are you going to choose? How much can you really afford? What lender are you working with? We're seeing a lot of search volume uh, and a lot of you know search volume on different types of products now really increasing. Um, MRC, again, we see that's from tons of sites. We've got mortgage products that we work with, over 50 affiliates. You know, We own and operate some of our sites, fhaloans.com, usdloans.com. We've got great partners in the home search section, realtor and homes, a lot of realty companies as well, which are more agent first. Personal finance is a big section and then mortgage resources. And so, oh, well, one of these doesn't wanna go. Uh, uh, one of the slides wasn't showing, uh, but it was about different search. So some of Google trends for April. Uh, in April, we saw a lot of searching for FHA, uh, a lot of search for home equity, reverse st searching starting to come out of Google trends. Uh, and, and obviously mortgage rates is like the top search. Mortgage rates today, mortgage rates has been the top search for a long time. You're always going to see a lot of rate searches, a lot of calculator searches, but we are starting to see some of those smaller products, cash out starting to be searched more. Uh, we really are starting to see a lot more search. And on the MRC side, we're seeing, you know, several thousand different interactions across our products every single month. And our, our lenders are integrating way more. So we integrate into all these different CRMs. We are starting to do a lot more digital mortgage integrations, which lenders are really liking. So at this point, we ask typically about 15 to 20 questions in our lead flows. Uh, to users. And then what we're able to do now is auto redirect all of those customers directly into somebody's flow, uh, right into their point of sale. They can, the customer can just basically continue the process. And so we kind of have our standard, uh, you know, confirmation page where they can click in that process. Now, instead of a, a click out, we actually just do a full auto redirect. So we immediately match the lender right upon a lead submission. Uh, and then we go straight into the product. So I could probably run through some quick demos of kind of what our process looks like. Uh, I'm sure everyone's familiar with lead flows and we have a lot of different questions in there. One of our sites, fhaloans.com. But again, if you're getting matched with the lender, this won't go, it's a demo one. Uh, so we're not gonna go straight into someone's digital application. We don't wanna create a loan app, but it just to give you an idea. We're taking all these questions that a user asks now and directly integrating them into people's applications so the customer can really get started right away on their process. So right when they submit their lead, it just kind of goes in and auto redirects that customer straight into application. All the form flows will move over. And in a usual setup, this would go straight into an application. Again, same kind of process here. You go through a flow, you're answering those final questions and you're going to just directly go on typically right into a process. So that's the same across all of our sites. So, you know, if you're on realtor.com, that exact same experience is gonna be at the end of a flow. If you're on, you know, MoneyWise, looking at an article, reading about mortgage rates, the same thing is gonna be available to you at the bottom. All of our sites are, are uniform in how they operate. And so we've kind of taken this same form, form flow. We've taken it across 50 plus sites now. And now we're kind of opening up that digital mortgage side of things so those 200 partners starting to roll out more and more integrations. Uh, and really how that process works is we're taking all these questions, mapping everything over and making sure it's as easy as possible for the customer to just go straight in that digital process, especially in this market, getting to a quick underwrite, getting ready for a purchase. We're seeing even on the purchase side, you know, those customers are filling out those applications right away. They're motivated, their agents are telling them, you need to be as close to underwritten as possible if you're gonna compete out there with the offers that people are seeing. Uh, the other side of things, we do also have our rate products and different calculators out there. So we do bring in rate sheets from lenders, run, uh, we just acquired Brown Bag Media in February. And so this is expanded even more in terms of lenders we touch and how we can interact with those rate shoppers uh, on different sites. And then finally, we'll be rolling out more agent style flows as well. Uh, we integrate with some different sites, helping them match with agents. So we really interact with companies in a variety of ways in terms of 
how the user is going to interact, whether they're a rate shopper, whether they're looking for agents, whether they're shopping for homes, um, all those different types of users we regularly see. Uh, and we're con continuing to see a lot more traffic across MRC, uh, especially as the purchase market heats up. And as we continue to see the refi market really stay strong, I think, uh, you know, the numbers from last quarter, like I said, they seem to be remaining flat, but a lot of the forecasts are reporting a little bit less volume uh, as we head into summer from refi. So everyone seems to be shifting their mindset into purchase. I, I feel like we've been saying this is coming for years. It, it feels like maybe it's it's finally arriving, a, a much stronger, bigger purchase market. And so that's something that we'll, we'll wait and see kind of what it looks like for the rest of the year. But certainly wanted to leave some time here at the end for some more questions, whether it be on industry yeah. as a whole or MRC in general. Uh, happy to take any and see what uh, if there are any out there. Yeah, so Alex, that's that's great. And thank you for jumping into it. Uh, the question, which I'll get back to, but I have a preface to the question is, essentially, what can banks do to regain their market share? So you don't have to answer this specifically, but if I looked at your list or the presentation you just made, I am guessing that two thirds of those who interact with your essentially marketplace network are actually lenders and only a third are banks. Uh, maybe that's right, maybe it's wrong. You can correct me, that's proprietary information, I'll have to say it. The question is, what can the banks actually do to begin to regain some of the market share against the lenders, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, we work with a lot of banks today. Uh, so our, our mix, I won't go into our exact, I don't, don't know our exact mix, but certainly a lot of banks out there, I, I think are starting to take on more leads. Uh, you know, the online space, the amount of leads being generated online right now, uh, there's, you know, it's looking at a lot of categories, right? How do you maybe work with a lot of the agent networks out there and make sure you're integrating with those leads? How are you handling some of the different products? So, you know, like I said, banks are opening up a lot more in terms of FHA, home equity, cash outs, that availability to credit. I think, you know, we're seeing it across the industry, credit's still been tight throughout this. Uh, and, and while that credit availability opens up, I, I think banks' ability to take those leads and, and also integrate a lot of the great technology that they have. Uh, they have a lot of the information, they have a lot of these great digital products. So continuing to integrate those products into that really that first mile is kind of, I guess, what MRC focuses on. How are customers initially being introduced to a lender? Um, you know, how are they following up with calls? How are you following up with texts? What's your email strategy? Are you right away getting into a digital product? Really, how does the customer feel when they're first introduced, right? We send thousands of customers to lenders every single day and, and we see tons of different approaches, right? So it's really deciding what you're, you're gonna lean on your technology, how much is your sales team really going to need to carry what you're doing and deciding on that and, and figuring out how you can scale that up across your organization. Yeah, no, that makes sense, Alex. And at, at the scale that you're operating, obviously conversion all the way from each of your essentially lending or realtor specific sites all the way through is key. Are you seeing anything different today, 2021 with the consumer experience than you saw a year or two years ago? Yeah, I mean, from a digital standpoint, a lot more digital products out there. And I would say companies leaning on those products and then performing, right? So getting right into those digital flows, sending out those text links, chats. There's a lot of great companies, you know, operating within the chat space. The amount of ways that people are interacting from a text and digital side, that's definitely a change. And you're getting, you know, I think way higher contact rates. But with that, the biggest thing is how do you manage all these clients? And that's where I think companies struggle is, you know, you have people, it's a lot easier to handle the quicker transactions. The refis are, are certainly easier. It's a quicker turn time. Uh, the purchase shoppers who have found a house or they're right there, but those purchase shoppers that are three to six months out, what is your incubation strategy with them? How are you following up? How are you maintaining that, you know, value to that customer and getting them to the confidence that they can either sell their house and buy a new one or that they're actually ready to go when there's 10 plus offers out there that they're not calling last minute, doing all these things. So really companies who are changing their sales structure to make sure that their customers are ready, that they have the tool that works for them and that when it is time for them to buy, that their offers are competitive and they're actually you know ready to go and have a chance of getting one of these houses when there's- Great. You know, Alex, thank you so much for uh, taking the time with us today. We greatly appreciate it. Anyone in the audience, you can obviously find Alex on LinkedIn or through any other kind of social channel out there. But Alex, once again, kudos and thank you for that.